Fighting Blindness Canada's Viewpoint is a virtual education series that brings you the latest in vision research presented by health experts from across Canada. The webinar you're about to watch is a recording. To learn more about the research we fund and upcoming webinars and events, please visit our website at fightingblindness.ca. This Viewpoint webinar is proudly presented by Bayer and supported by Novartis, Allergan, Janssen, Biogen, AGTC, Miara GTX, and the SickKids Foundation. We'd also like to thank Accessible Media Inc., our national accessibility partner. Everyone should download the AMI app, which is a fabulous resource. And you can watch excellent programming, including previous Fighting Blindness Canada events. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoy this webinar and share your thoughts with us in the comment section below. Good afternoon. We're so excited to be here today and we chose to talk about a few of our favorite low vision devices. One of the reasons we really enjoy our job is that we get to deal with patients of all ages and all types of eye disorders and eye diseases. So we get to do the full range of eye stuff. So as she was saying, some of the things that we do are uh, sports uh, and vision training, contact lenses, we make glasses here, we do medical testing. So we have you know, the visual field machine, OptiMap retinal cameras, OCTs, the list goes on. But um, we also really enjoy our low vision center. So about 25 years ago, we decided that we wanted to do low vision a little bit differently than it was being done. And um, we set up ours so that we have two main points of entry. So we'll have the people walking in off the street. Um, they may be looking for themselves or for someone that they know of uh, that uh, might be interested. And they can see what the array of devices are and they can touch and try anything they want. The second point of entry um, would be through an eye exam. So after someone may come in and say, oh, I, I just need a stronger pair of glasses. Um, I'm having some trouble. And if we find that a stronger pair of glasses is actually not going to help them, we walk them over to um, our, our clinic there and um, we show them what is available that actually may meet their needs. So today, I think you're going to show them. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see if this. Okay. So today we want to talk about some of the six favorite uh, low vision devices that we have, and we're going to definitely leave lots of time at the end for some questions if you have. But as before we begin, one theme that you're going to notice is that we're going to talk about that there's in low vision devices there's not one low vision device or product or magnifier that will do everything. So we're coming up on, on yard work season, Manitoba, it's a balmy 20, or 18 degrees out uh, today. And so just like in the garden, a rake doesn't do what a shovel does and a shovel doesn't do what a hand spade does. You need the right tool for the right job and low vision devices are the same. Some products will do one thing and not another. So what, as we share these uh, six devices, we're gonna tell you a little bit about what they do. <clears throat> Pardon me. And uh, and what they're what they're ideally uh, suited for. <clears throat> so the first one I wanted to talk about was handheld magnifiers. So handheld magnifiers are great for spot viewing. Excuse me. <clears throat> so these are things like getting your mail from the mailbox and being able to read it, looking at price tags. My my grandma she'd also always used to tell Selena that. She would use a ma little handheld magnifier to get her key in the door so she can see where that goes. Um, even checking medicine bottles, looking at bottles like you're telling the difference between your shampoo and your conditioner, things like that. So anything you wanna just look for a short period of time, things like reading your eye drops, making sure you put the right eye drops in. Last weekend, I had a patient that texted me saying that I need to see you, Dr. Nelson because I put my ear, my dog's, eardrops in my eyes uh, because she miss, mixed up her bottle. So sometimes that happens with, fortunately not very often with uh, super glue, but uh, it's important to be able to read those labels correctly. So these devices are terrific uh, for that. They're easy to carry in a pocket or a bag. So these magnifiers, they're gonna come in a wide variety of, uh, they're gonna come in different strengths. 
And you'll notice on most of these devices, they're going to have some numbers on them. And I'll tell you a little bit about what these numbers mean. So you're going to see a times number. So in this particular slide, it shows four times. And then you'll see a, another number that has a D. This says 12D. And that refers to diopters. So almost all of these handheld magnifiers are going to be labeled like that with a time number and a diopter number for so you to know what the strengths are. When we are looking at these devices uh, as optometrists, we mostly focus on the diopter number. And if you want to compare one magnifier to another, that's the number that you want to use because that's the one that's consistent from device to, to device. Now the power, people understand that or that makes more intuitive sense to them on what it is. And if you want to make a conversion from diopters to powers, there's, there's a formula that you can do that. More specifically, there's actually two formulas that you can use to convert that. Uh, we've got them listed up here, so if you enjoy your math, the conversion is if you have diopters and divide it by four, that will give you an approximate you know, power number. So for example, if you have a 20 diopter magnifier, if you divide that by four, that gives you a five times magnifier. There's another formula which will uh, take that and add one. So sometimes a 20 diopter magnifier could be listed as a five times magnifier or a six times magnifier. So there's a little bit of inconsistency sometimes with the times, but with the diopters, it's gonna always be consistent from device to device. So these devices, they're gonna come in a wide variety of, of strengths and, um, and, and power. So the range is, these particular handheld ones, they come start at about eight diopters and they go up to about 56 diopters in their strength. One important factor, as the power gets higher, the size of the lens, the diameter of the lens gets smaller and smaller. And a lot of people will ask, well, can I have this really high 56 diopter lens, but I want it in a really big lens? And uh, it's a common question. And uh, my, my, my cheeky answer is that uh, unfortunately I can't break the laws of physics. And they, if you do that, in theory, they can make a lens like that, but the lens is going to be so thick and so heavy and so cumbersome. It's just not going to work. So it, it's a frustrating thing. So there's, there's a compromise of, of what magnification power you want to go with and you want to, want to generally pick as, as low of power as you need to get by and, and do the tasks that you want to do. Um, so your optometrist can always tell you what power you need, but there is a rule of thumb that you can use to start with. Um, and the one piece of information you need is to remember what your best vision is with glasses on. So for example, if your best vision is 20 over 400, uh, we would inverse that. So 400 divided by 20 is 20. So we would start you with a 20 diopter magnification. The one example here on the slide is 20 over 200. So that would give you a 10 diopter and start with that and play with that first. So 2080 vision would be four diopters. And if you have 2050 vision, you definitely want to start with at least a 2.5 diopter magnification. <laughs> One thing that I, I didn't mention previously when I was talking about magnification strength, so a lot of the, the ones you'll get from your optometrist, they're going to start at about eight diopters. If you get one from like Walmart or a drugstore, most, the highest those will go up to would probably be maybe a four times, or not a four times, a four diopter or a six diopter. So they're quite low powers compared to the ones uh, that you'll typically get from, from the optometrist. So these handheld magnifiers, a great new feature on them that they have is they have a, a really bright um, LED light. If you're seeing uh, this here on the screen, it's got a pretty, pretty bright light on it. The nice thing about the LED light, it, it's really bright, but it doesn't burn out. And so you, there's no bulb that you have to change. Uh, the bat, it has batteries um, that uh, just, this one takes uh, three uh, AAA batteries. Um, the batteries will burn out, uh, but the bulb won't. Um, and it's a, a great feature for it. The key for these handheld magnifiers is how you use them. And unfortunately, most of us, the only place you've seen someone use a hand mag handheld magnifier is in a TV show or a movie. Uh, and almost always they're using them wrong. 
even in this slide, and I won't say which company it's from, but this slide <laughs> that they're showing, they're using this device incorrectly. And if you can see the photo, you look at the edges of the, of the magnifier and you see how distorted it is, and you only get a real clear image right at the center. And that's what happens if you hold the magnifier you know, way out and not, not view it. So what you need to do is the key to these is you wanna get these right up close to your eye. If you can see me in the camera, I've got this right up close. And so the analogy I have for these handheld magnifiers is you wanna use them kind of like if you are looking into your neighbor's yard. So if you have a hole in your fence and you wanna see what your neighbor is doing, you don't stand back at arm's reach because you don't get that big a field of view. What you do is you get right up to that hole and then you can see everything that your neighbor's doing in his backyard. And that will give you the widest field of view. So it's a little, it's a changing of what you have it. It's doing things a little bit differently. You bring it up close. You have to bring the material up close, but you're gonna get a much wider field of view. And they're gonna, and particularly when you get up into those really high magnification, it's gonna work much, much better and a lot easier to use. Okay. So the next product is the stand magnifier, and it's basically a version of a handheld, except with the added benefit of it sitting directly on the table. So it gives a way more stability. So it's really good for long sessions of reading, and um, you do need a table or a reading platform, and it is, because it's quite large, it's less portable. So you, pretty, you need a pretty big purse to bring this with. Um, they come in the same power ranges as the handheld. So if you're already using, like, for example, a 20 diopter handheld, that it would be natural to start with a 20 diopter stand magnification. Um, you do need to get up close. So you want to make sure that you have a comfortable chair and, and a good working area because you, you don't want to be too far from the top of the stand magnifier. Um, and they're made by a number of companies. So he has an example of one there, and I have one here. Uh, we also have another line um, besides these two lines that the stand actually and the handheld separate. So you can take it and use it portably to look at your thermostat, and then you can sit down and read your newspaper. That's a great point that there's a place to use both of these devices to have a little handheld that you can have portable, but then also have the stand at home that uh, is a, a little bit more sturdy and, and stable to use. So our next one actually technically is another stand magnifier, but it's called Macrolux and it's a little bit different than the other ones. So um, it's different because it's called the slice dough magnifier and it has the added benefit of a super, super bright LED light and it sits flat on the page like the other one and the beauty of it is that it's the full width of a newspaper column. So no more sliding your magnifier left and right. Uh, you get the whole line without distortion in the stand. So you're just sliding the, the magnifier forward and back instead of all the other because it can be tricky um, navigating sometimes. And this one actually comes in two different strengths. And it's pretty modern looking too. Yeah, I love this one. This one, this one's a favorite because it, it looks looks nice. Um, and and I think the real uh, key to this one is that light, that LED light that shines in there. It makes the uh, dome, the slice magnifier, really, really bright and and a fabulous product. All right. So all the products so far that we've been talking about have been devices that you can help, they can help you do up close work. So reading things that you can bring up close, looking up at near. So this next item, this is a product also made by Eschenbach and it's called the Max TV. And this device is designed to help you see further away, to help you look off in the distance. And so this is the Max TV. So this is a Galilean type of uh, telescope and it there's two, uh, models or versions of this. There's a standalone version. That's the one featured at the top here. So if you don't wear glasses, you can just put that on and wear it as it is. And then there's a clip-on version that if you do wear glasses, you can clip this onto your existing pair of glasses and then it flips up and flips down. So this device, this telescope has about a two times magnification and it's great for watching TV, movies, shows, concerts, plays, things like that. You cannot use it for driving and you cannot walk with it. 
um, just because it, it will magnify things, but it restricts your, your uh, field of view. So uh, it's kind of like walking with, you know, kind of looking through a, uh, a toilet paper roll or something like that. You don't have much field of view. There is also a tinted version of it. So if you are watching something outdoors, um, it has a tinted version that you can help you see in the difference, distance a little bit better. The other really nice product they have in this same line is the Max Detail. So this Max Detail, again, it comes in two versions, the standalone version and the clip-on version. They can go over a clip-on pair of glasses. But what's different about this is they designed this so you can do things at kind of arm's reach. So the tricky part when you're using a, a handheld magnifier like we talked about before, you have to bring that close up to your eye and then you have to bring the print material right up close. So you're working within, you know, three, four inches and a lot of tasks you can't, you can't work that closely. So working on a computer screen, let's say looking at music, um, doing hobbies and sewing or things like that, where you need to work out at arm's reach distance, but still get that extra magnification, that's what this device is, is really used for. You've got a, you've got an, a, a real life example of this one. <laughs> During this COVID crisis, uh, my mom asked me for my embroidery hoop, which I thought was a bit unusual. And then a couple of days later, I got a phone call asking um, if we had a device to help her see to do the embroidery. Uh, so we brought this over and it obviously solved the problem as my dad gave us a big thank you. And we have not heard from my mom at all. Well, not about that. Right. Okay. <laughs> Other things. <laughs> All right. Oh, this is my favorite one. Okay, good. Um, so uh, this is the Smart Lux uh, digital magnifier. It is, it is, it is awesome. Um, it can replace a handheld and a stand magnifier in one. So basically, it works for short-term things like price tags. It works for extended reading. Um, and Michael just changed the slide. So you can angle it um, to do a bunch of other tasks. So you can sit and write, you can thread a needle. It's basically a mini portable CCTV. Um, so this, this one has a screen that's five inch and it fits nicely in the hand. So I think this is our favorite size. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's very, very intuitive. So um, you do not have to have ever used a cell phone. You don't have to have ever used a computer. Um, there's no prior knowledge of anything electronic, like basically a toaster. It is, it is so good. So there's very little learning curve involved. Um, and there's only four color-coded tactile buttons. So even the patients that have quite reduced vision or new to being having reduced vision, um, it's quite easy for them to learn to use. So basically the big one, you just toggle through the magnifications and another beauty is that you have five times, seven times, nine times, and 12 times magnification in one device. And then even more exciting is the contrast. So for those of us with um, average vision, it's not a big deal, but the patients with um, vision loss, this this is a big game changer. So it has uh, colored, enhanced black and on white, reverse contrast, yellow on black, and black on yellow. It also has a freeze frame mode. So you can take an image and you can go and study it later. So if you want a phone number, you can, or a price tag or whatever, you can subtly take a little picture and then later sit and study it and, and look at it. So the batteries are rechargeable and it's super easy to carry and take care of. Yeah, that's a, that's a favorite. It's always a hit and it's, you know, it's, a, it's, it's a great replacement to both a stand and a handheld magnifier. There's another shot of someone using it. All right, so the last um, topic I wanted to talk about was tinted eyewear. And I feel that tinted eyewear is probably underrated and, and probably underutilized um, because tint enhancement can make a, a big difference with, with people with vision impairments. So what tints do for you? Do, there's basically three things that they're doing for you. Number one, that they're going to improve the contrast of what you're looking at. Number two is they're going to reduce the scatter, the light scatter of particular wavelengths of light. And number three, they're going to reduce the overall amount of light that's entering into your eye, which can make things a lot more comfortable. 
So these fit overs are going to come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and styles. They're going to be fit over versions that will fit over a pair of glasses, but you can also get a, uh, these tints made in your regular eyewear as well and tinted a, a, you know, a custom color. So they come in a variety of colors and you'll see on the screen we've got yellow and orange and amber and brown and gray uh, and various tints and everyone, depending on their personal preference, the task they're doing, the condition they have, will find that some colors will work better than others for the particular task. So it, it's really important that if you're looking at these, try them on, try them on in, in, in the clinic, go outside or, and see where, which one is helping you specific. And oftentimes we will find that people will come with someone and the person that's accompanying them that might say, oh, I tried that one, oh, it doesn't feel anything. But then the person with the vision impairment, they go, this makes a big difference. And so it, it's really individualistic. So uh, don't necessarily rely on what others tell you or you know, on, on what's gonna work for you. You have to try it out. Yeah. Try to yourself. The other thing that, uh, that's good to be aware of is some people think that darker is better and not necessarily. And I think there's, there's definitely a place to have more than one brightness of these. And so you could have a uh, one color and intensity design that you use on a really sunny day. You might have a different one that works really great on overcast days and you might have another one that's really great indoors and the, they might be different colors or different intensities um, for those tasks. And again, the right tool for the right job, the sunglass, even I, if I go outside, I'm not gonna wear as dark of a sunglass as you know you might like if it's an overcast day on a, as a sunny day. So um, tints are a great uh, product that you can look at to try to enhance um, what you're looking at. So uh, we just want to thank you uh, for the opportunity to uh, share some of our, our favorites. And we assume uh, there may be questions because uh, this is a very broad field and we shrunk it, shrunk it, shrunk it. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so uh, um, I'm, I'm hoping Morgan has questions. I have so many questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have a bunch of questions that have come in. Um, come in over the uh, over email. I'm also just going to um, share my screen as well. Um, oops, let's see what's happening here. Maybe I can. So there's a couple ways that you can ask a question if you have a question. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to get this up. Okay, here we go. Um, so you can either type it in, as I mentioned, into the Q&A box, which is on the bottom. And I see a few people have already done that, which is fantastic. Um, so so the other way you can do it is to raise your hand. Um, and the way you do that is uh, there's keyboard uh, shortcuts. So on a PC, you can press Alt-Y or on a Mac, you can press Option-Y. And uh, when I call on you, I'll open up an audio channel so you can ask um, verbally your question. Um, but just to get started, uh, we have a few that have come in over email. So um, this first question was from Jeff and he says that he has Stargardt's and he's looking for a wearable device to help with his mobility, especially for riding his bike and operating his boat. He's very adventurous and wonders if you have any suggestions. All right. So what you need, so we, we talked about one uh, telescopic device, the Max TV, and I specifically said you can't drive or walk around with it. And that's true. But you, what do you need? What it sounds like you probably need is a wearable telescopic device, and they do make those. So the, what you want to search for or ask for is a bioptic telescope, and these are what they use. People will use for driving. So people with vision impairments, and I do have some Stargardt's patients that are using these to drive a car. So they're going to work for a bicycle and and riding a lens. And I might, uh, Morgan, can I share my screen again? Because I'm going to just I'll give it back to you. I pulled up something. Can you do that? Do I have to do something? Here, uh, Here let me stop share. There you go. Sorry. I mean, because I pulled up an image. Okay, so see this one right here. So this device is a bioptic telescope. And so what you'll see is that the telescope is mounted at the top of the pair of glasses. And most of the time you look not through the telescope. 
So you kind of just generally can see with your peripheral vision with Stargardt, you can see your peripheral vision just normally. But then when you need to spot view so for some details, then you drop your chin down and then you can spot it. These come in, in manual focus ones and autofocus ones. There's also ones that are just little telescopes that are mounted in that you can just drop down as well. So that what you want is a bioptic telescope and that will work well. I'll give you a screen back there, Morgan. That's okay. I, can, I don't really need it right now. Um, okay, so another question was, are there any suggestions for a mini or portable CCTV? Um, the, the person who wrote the question says he's not happy with his Zoom Max mini and finds he has trouble getting it to focus. So, yeah, so there, Dr. Friesen had mentioned that, that Smart Lux. Um, so there, there's these little portable electronic uh, magnifiers are, are getting better and better and the price is coming down and down. So if it's been a while since, if you have one that doesn't seem like it's focusing quite as well now um, or, or never did, check out some of the newer ones because they're always improving and, and they're, they really work, work well. And the price wise, like that one we showed you, the Smart Lux, um, that one, seven, I think it's like, it's about seven, eight hundred dollars um, So, you know, for, for what it does for you. We have smaller ones that are a little bit less, but like this one, the size is just yeah, perfect. that works well. The smaller one is a little bit more tedious. Yeah. the buttons are a bit smaller. Yeah. Okay, uh, Ivy, who also such as Stargardt, asks if you have any recommendations for a device that could read uh, low contrast numbers on a thermostat. She said that she's tried using a couple of apps like Seeing AI and Tap Tap See, but they did not work for her. Okay, so that's a, a tough one. I've got a couple of ideas. So one is, I mean, you can, you can always try a little handheld magnifier, see if that gives you, uh, and with a light, see if that gives you enough magnification. Um, uh, I know there's, if we're talking about apps specifically, you could, there's another app that I know of, uh, oh, what did I just Be call it? Eyes. Yeah, Be My Eyes. So Be My Eyes, and this app, basically, if you, basically you wanna do something, you call something and then it shares your screen with, someone who doesn't have a vision impairment and you can hold it up and they could verbally tell you it. Um, so that's another uh, app that might be able to help. Or the other one, we, we often look at what devices can help you see that the object better. But the other option is um, maybe try to just make the object bigger. So thermostats, and I don't know off the top of my head, but I know there has to be probably some large size thermostats that you can get. And that might even be cheaper than looking at getting a magnifier and things like that. And Thermostats aren't that hard to change. If you have somebody that's handy that, that might be able to change that, you might be able to just get a thermostat that's bigger or brighter. Great. Um, and I think you've kind of already answered most of this question, but any other comments? Um, Milton asked if you could comment on patient success with focusing telescopic eyewear um, and uh, how that would be affected by the patient's prescription. So the focusing ones, um, like and that would be like the, the bioptic. The bioptic uh, has a, an autofocus version um, and they work quite well. And again, like the, these, the technology is improving all the time with these. And so it, it does make it easier than, than doing the manual focus. I think that the, probably the biggest barrier with these is not so much the, uh, how they work, but it's more the price point because they can, I think they can be like $1,500, $2,000. So they're not, they're not a, a cheap option, but yeah, they can work pretty well. And that kind of leads actually into the next question, which was from Melanie. And Melanie was asking, what are the cost of some of these different products? Could you give some more examples of the Oh yeah, cost? absolutely. So if you want, if just thinking off the top of your head, so we got the one. six, so the handheld magnifiers, these ones, uh, they're about $89 for these, the stand ones, they're about 130. These are what we sell them for. So uh, it's, it's ballpark figure, figures. Uh, what else did we have? Oh, the Smart Lux, uh, the, the, the Macro Lux, is that uh, Dome one? There's two versions. These are about 250. Uh, 195, 250, something like that. Yeah. The uh, Smart Lux uh, digital one, that one's about 800. The, what do we have? Uh, the uh, the um, like tinted fit overs, like probably anywhere 69 to hundred dollars. Oh, the max detail and the max uh, TV ones. I think those are about uh, 200. Uh, under, just under 200. Yeah, just under 200 for, for these. So yeah, that's the type of ranges that we're, you're looking at. 
But yeah, the telescopes, the ones that we were talking about later, the bioptics are a lot more money. Yeah, because they're more custom and yeah, it's a, it's a really specific item. Great. Um, so Amber Joy asks, I find that with a stand magnifier, I often have to go one strength stronger than a handheld magnifier. Okay. Have you found that? I also found that the stand magnifier works better for people with bifocals. I once had an optometrist tell me both are because of something about the lens design. Could you have any insights into that? Well, so what, what you're probably noticing is the difference with a stand magnifier, when it sits flat on a page, there is a fixed distance between the lens and your paper. You can't make that higher or lower. And so the, the, the optics coming out of that lens are, you know, they, they, they're fixed. Um, so they will, they, you know, they might be designed to work with your glasses and your bifocals just fine. Now with your handheld ones, you can change that distance. There is an optimal distance that it, it's designed for that you might work, but you might change that higher or lower and that might affect how your glasses work. And that also might, where you are preferring to use it, might affect the, the magnification power you might find worked one versus the other. So yeah, if that works for you, do it. Yeah. Yeah, it really depends on the glasses you're wearing and what your eye strength is. All those, all those lenses add up. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, Lise also had a question. She would like uh, more explanation about the e-scoop glasses. I wonder if that's e-sight, e-scoop. Is that a thing? Uh, there's an e-sight, yeah, there's some e-sight glasses. Um, and these are basically an electronic, um, I'm trying to think the best, electronic head-mounted uh, telescope. So basically it, it has a, a headset or head uh, piece that you wear on, and it has a video screen that you're looking through. And then that video screen is looking at things out in the distance or even up close it can focus up close or in the distance and so you can can use that so it's kind of like using those bioptic ones but it's instead of the bioptic ones are using an optical technology you're basically looking through optics through lenses the e-sight you're looking through a screen uh, so it's using uh, digital and, and technology so that gives you some there's some advantages of that that it can enhance or zoom in and zoom out a little bit um, the cost on those is, is higher uh, with them. Again, you, you're not walking around looking through them. You're kind of, they're sitting up above and you can, you, you can walk without them and then look, glance down and in, in and out. So yeah, it's, it's another form of a, an electronic telescope. Great, and uh, Carmelo is asking, uh, so where can someone purchase any of these products? Uh, they're asking where is your shop, but maybe more broadly <laughs> uh, for those who aren't in Winnipeg, uh, any suggestions on where they can look for these different kinds of devices? Well, I would say check with your optometrist. So, you know, you know I'm assuming most of you have or, or at one point in time seen an optometrist or, uh, or if not, talk to your ophthalmologist as well. But optometrists or ophthalmologists, they're going to, if they don't provide them, they're going to be able to direct you to someone in your area that deals with low vision. Um, and can help you out with that absolutely. And they're all like we have we have them um, on our website, so people can buy them. But then it's it's nice to try them first. Yeah. I like I like the tactile of trying them first, and then also being taught how to use them because some of them are not intuitive. Yeah, and it's and it's good to kind of get the right thing for the right job, and they can and there might be a specific thing that they might be you think I, I might need this, but then they might recommend something that oh you actually need this. So absolutely. Um, so Rita asks, do you have any suggestions for a teenager with only one eye with vision? Um. But I'm going, how does that one eye see? <laughs> is my first question. Yes. Yeah, so that's the question: is if <laughs> You know, assuming if, assuming the one eye is normal, then, you know, you know, he could probably function pretty well other than, and, you know, people are, are pretty good at adapting. There's a lot of people with only one, one I always one give eye. the example of Babe Ruth. I said, Babe Ruth, uh, his one eye was 2200 and then the other eye was, and he did pretty well. But. The one thing that, that we, uh, there'll be a side tangent here, that when we're, when we're helping people with vision impairments, it's the number of kids that we see with vision impairments is very, very few. Uh, and 
there's a reason for that. And the reason is that kids are incredibly, have this incredible ability to adapt and figure stuff out and, and, and make things work. And then sometimes we give them some things to help them along the way. But um, yeah, of, of all the people that we, we don't see a lot of, it's a lot of kids. I'll even, I'll even like some of my patients that are uh, kids like that, we'll, I'll, my kids will be going to the same school. And I said, well, don't you notice that? They're going, I don't believe you, Selena. Your, the vision can't be that bad. They're doing stuff. And I said, well, like when they're walking the steps, they're always touching the step in front of them or they're touching the wall. And these kids have figured out how to do things. It's quite yeah. incredible. It's just amazing to me. They just uh, think and they figure out how to get by. Yeah. There's some amazing plasticity of the brain at that age. They can yeah. kind of adapt to anything. The determination is exactly. just incredible. Um, so Bruce is asking, are the tinted lenses made by Corning or someone else? Well, tinting lenses, you, there's lots of different companies that will make them. So you can have, uh, like there's, there's Noir, Cocoons, uh, I'm trying to think uh, of other ones. There's, there, there are Corning lenses um, that are available. So you, and depending on what you're looking for, you this some features that are better, better about some than others. So the, the Corning is, is a really specific lens. Um, it's a glass lens. They tend to be in a really specific um, wavelengths that they block out. Um, sometimes they're a little bit harder to get in certain prescriptions uh, on them. But yeah, you, there's, there's a wide variety of, of tints and um, you will find some work differently than others. And I, I wouldn't say that one's better than the other, that they're different. We have a number of different companies' kits that yeah. we, we go between. So it's nice having all the different options. Great. Um, is there a Canadian distributor or lab for these bioptics that you're talking about? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good question. Well, the, the bioptics, um, I mean, we get ours through, through Eschenbach and then Eschenbach has a Canadian division, but I think then that where they're actually manufactured, where they're there, I don't think they're manufactured in Canada. I'm not sure if they're, they might be the US or they might be Europe. I can't, uh, I can't remember, but um, that you, I mean, you can get these in Canada. Um, you'll get them through your optometrist because you'll definitely want to get those through your optometrist because they, there's some very specific fitting heights that are critical for them of where they're lining up. So that is, and particularly when you're spending that amount of money, that's part of what you want to do is make sure those fit are fitted properly. Great. Um, so any suggestions on how to find the optometrists um, in your province that would deal with these biopic glasses? So you could, there's two options that you could do. One is you could talk with your, you could look up the local optometry association. So in Manitoba, the Manitoba Association of Optometrists. And if you call them up, they will give you a list of, of optometrists that might do low vision. Uh, being part of the, C, the Canadian Association of Optometrists, you could also go to the uh, Canadian Association of Optometrists website and uh, you could always even send them an email and ask, hey, do you know of any optometrists in my area that might uh, do low vision? And they might be able to help you out there. And even in our province, the retinal ophthalmologists and the other optometrists um, around know which optometrists are doing it. So even asking your optometrist, they may oh, yeah. refer you, or your ophthalmologist, they may refer you to. Yep. Great. Um, so uh, David has a question. He says, I have a diabetic retinopathy. I face both near and far impairments. Uh, his problem is his pupillary distances are different for far and near. For example, eSight does not work for close vision, uh, reading products in the grocery store, but works excellent for him for distance viewing, for example, PowerPoint. Uh, I work as an accountant and have trouble helping my team as I cannot read their monitors when asked questions. Reading the monitors, sorry? Uh reading their monitors like, when he has a PowerPoint in you know, like a boardroom setting so mm -hmm. he can see the the PowerPoint but then the trust to see oh yeah so for so the e-site is working well for the distance but not up close that's what I'm getting yeah yeah um, we have similar type of thing like with judges like we've had some patients that are judges and so we went with the near <laughs> It is uh, a tricky, yeah, when you have to do back and forth and, uh, you know, and um, 
this isn't uh, unique necessarily to uh, vision impairments. We have people with normal vision that have that big problem with their multifocals doing that same type of thing. Um, that's a tough one. Um, I'm trying to think other than like things on your screen to try to magnify that other than, you know, moving the screen further away. That's kind of tricky to do. Um, that's that a tough that one, one. That one would take some time to think through all the options. Because yeah. you don't want to take, sometimes we have to steal to give, but you don't want to steal this time. Yeah, that, that's a tough one. Um, we'll have to think about that one. Yeah. <laughs> Not a problem. Um, so Barbara is asking, uh, what is there a particular color of lens um, for people with RP, retinitis pigmentosa? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that there's definitely, okay, this one's going to work for everyone with RP, but a lot of people, they will say that oftentimes kind of some of the darker reds are, are, are what people tend to like. So that's where you might want to start in the kind of the red end of the spectrum. So that, uh, that would be like textbook from medical journals, mm -hmm. but then there's real light. And some people <laughs> will find one versus another. So I would look for, I would try that. And see. So what you want to do is go go someplace that has a variety of tint colors, and say, "Hey, can I try some of these on?" And then you might be able to find one that works. Okay. Um, another question came in for the uh, bioscopic. Bi bi <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. good no. lens for driving. What is the vision you have to have to use it? Uh, Twenty over one fifty or less. Um, so in order to be able to use it, yeah, I would say, I'm not sure if there's a, a, a set cutoff. I'm trying to think of the patients that I have that are using it. And I think the ones that I have that are using it, they, they're probably in the 2150, 2200 best corrected uh, range, and they're finding it works pretty well. Um, on the optical magnifiers, like if you're, if it's probably getting 2400 or, or worse, it can get tricky to, to use that. So if I was going to pick a, a, a power that they would be the best chance of, of success, it'd probably be 2200 or less or better. Sorry. Okay. Uh, okay. So Milton actually is just going back to a previous question for the mm -hmm. person who's asking about the thermostat. He suggests using a text to speech app to try oh, to read the thermostat. Yeah. Uh, okay, Carmel is asking, where is your shop? Uh, where can they be purchased? So again, um, talk to your optometrist or ophthalmologist about that and they can direct you. Um, so another question, um, what if we need to see our doctor during this time of COVID-19? Um, is telehealth available? How are, how are you handling that with patients right now? Yeah, that's a great question. I think we had the, you had this on this the webinar a couple of weeks ago. Um, we're, we're still here seeing patients. Dr. Friesen is seeing patients all day today. Um, we are directed by Manitoba to, to see urgent care uh, patients. So if someone has an urgent vision problem, and that can be a wide variety of things um, that are, are urgent to allow them to see and function, whether it's I have, uh, you know, flash and floaters because I might have a, a, a you know, retinal metal. attachment or metal in their eye or someone has a really high prescription and they've broken the glasses and they can't function and see, those are all things that we're, we're still seeing people. So um, again, most of, and most optometrists across the country are operating the same way. When the, the only thing that we're not doing is kind of routine um, checks and, and, and things like that. Um, that's the one thing we're, we're not doing, but otherwise most of the optometrists are there to help see you. Great. Uh, Leanne asks, are there specific tints for people who get frequent headaches from using a computer daily? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, Dr. Yeah. Dr. Friesen is going. She's going to get it. She's off. <laughs> okay, so what she's going to get, there is a particular tint um, called the FL41. So FL41. And this tint was, um, they did research and it was developed specifically to try to help people that have migraines. And so it's, it's kind of a, um, a light. Oh, I need a white background. <laughs> but you, you can't see, I put them on here. Um, but it, it's almost like a, you know, kind of pinkish purple, um, rose. rose. Oh, I guess rose. Yeah. It's called rose. Yeah. So it's kind of a, ro a really light rose tint, um, but it's FL41 and it was designed for people that might have migraines. And some, it's not 
uh, guaranteed treatment for migraines, but some people with migraines have said, hey, these might help to help, help them out. And some, they've actually done some work with concussions as well. And some people with concussions find that they might work. So look for FL4110. Great. Um, so Darius asks, do you recommend specific lenses for specific eye conditions or is it all about trying different lenses in various light situations? I would say, are, are we talking tints, I'm thinking? Or lenses? That's specific lenses. I, I have a go-to, like yeah. if they have glaucoma or diabetic retinopathy or cataracts or whatever their condition is, I have a go-to to start with that has some science behind it. It has some, you know, some journals about it. And then, um, and then if they want to look at others, I need them. I don't know what you're talking is. tints. Yeah, tints. Yeah, because I go into the wavelengths of light. What do you do? Yeah, it can. Some people will will do that tints. I don't know if they were talking about other lenses as well, but I think in general, what we look at doing is try to solve a. We're looking at solving a specific problem, not matching a. You know, so if you have a, a particular problem, then you do it different than me. Okay. We do it differently. <laughs> <laughs> a variety of perspectives, that's good. I just had a question come in from email um, from Heidi, and she said, uh, what is your experience with the orcas? Orca? Uh, I'm trying to, th I, don't, I don't know. What is it? Uh, I, have, I, I would say the answer to that question is uh, limited to none because I- <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'm trying to- She means orcam. No? Oh. See? I don't know. Okay, Heidi, if you're out there, send me some clarification. <laughs> we'll see if we can answer it. Right. Um, so Linda is asking, um, in which provinces do you see uh, bioptic telescopes being used for driving, as you mentioned? Is it like nationwide or specific to certain provinces? Oh. It will, uh, it'll, be, it'll vary from province to province. So every province will have its own specific regulations about what you can drive with, what you're allowed to drive with. So if you are vision impaired and you are looking to drive in a specific, you have to ask, and then they have specific steps that you have to go through. So uh, I don't know what they all are. There might be some provinces that you can't use bioptics and then some provinces that might be easier to use a bioptic. It, it does vary. Yeah, I know in Manitoba, so I'll just talk about what happens in Manitoba. So um, if you want to get to use these devices, here's the steps. First thing you have to do is you have to apply for a license and you get your vision checked and you will fail the vision test for the standard for driving and they will deny you your license and say, no, you cannot drive. And then what you have to do is you have to go through an appeal process and appeal that and say that I want to use a, a telescopic device to drive with. And then they will look at that appeal and you'll have to get a letter from your optometrist and whatever. And then you have to buy the device and then you will have to learn how to drive with that device with you know, a driver instructor. And then they will do a, a road test specific to you using that device to see if you will be able to pass, so. Great, um, I heard back from Heidi and it is OrCam. She's wondering if you have any experience with the OrCam. Nope. I do not, but okay. I'm just looking it up. OrCam, see it's what this is. At, it's good advertising, but they um, don't advertise to optometrists. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, no, it, so this looks like it's a, teles, a form of a telescopic uh, and I apologize, I don't know what, what it is, but. Um, Has, does she own it? Oh, okay, wait, you know, I am, uh, I, I haven't seen it. I, I am aware of this now. I'm just looking through as I look through. Because uh, I, I did start doing a little bit of research. I've never had any patients use it or I've used it, but it looks like it's, it's um, an optical recognition device. So it could recognize faces and then help read, you know, tell you information on that. Uh, I thought the the concept is great. And I think I, I can't wait for that to happen because can you imagine if even if you don't have a vision impairment, if you have a pair of glasses that can recognize pe people's faces and tell you in your ear that that's Morgan? I, I couldn't remember your name. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I'm sorry, I don't have any uh, any specific knowledge on it. Okay, um, so Ron is asking, do you have any recommendations for retinitis pigmentosa for nighttime or even you know, more generally for night blindness? Um, I mean, you, could, we can look, you can look at tints. 
Um, this is hard because yeah. usually we have a patient and we've asked them 20 questions before they ask <laughs> us the question. Yeah. So then we know what road to go down, yeah. but we don't know what he's tried so far. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't have any specific things that, that would say, okay, yeah, this is the then answer. We, then we know what his vision is and what his visual feel. We're so used to all this data. I get the visual field and the visual acuities first. Yeah. <laughs> all the devices he's tried and then I'll make a recommendation. Yeah. This is tricky. Well, the message there is see your optometrist. Well, yeah, we just we the the vision. spoiled. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Amber is asking, oh, Amber is saying um, Occutech may be an option for seeing computers and seeing into the distance. I think this is in reference to the person's question about uh, eSight, uh, yep. mounting by optic, yep. like near and distance focus. Do you have any yep. comments on that? Yeah, so it's another brand of a device that can do 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 those tasks. And there's a number of different companies that will make these, these um, telescopic. Great. Telescope. Excellent. Okay, so I think we have one last question here. Uh, it says, uh, what are your processes for determining which tint to use for which eye condition? <laughs> oh, we do it differently. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, we'll do, I'll do a little bit of trial and error and ask kind of what they're looking to do. You will have some specifics to go to start with. I have to go to and I, I tell them like which study I'm citing and all this. And then and then if they think I'm crazy, then I'll go a different route. But <laughs> so it depends on who they see. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, I think I have one last question that's just come in on the email. Um, David says, I have RP and often I have to close one eye to read something depending on the distance, uh, usually close up, say arm's length or, closers, or closer. Are there any glasses that would help correct for this condition? There's frosted lenses. Well, the, the, yeah, to reduce how much you have to close one eye, you could, yeah, you could get lenses that are frosted that would do that or help with that. Or a contact lens. Yeah, so maybe. Yeah. It's tough to answer. That yeah, one. we're bad at answering these questions really without, specific without ones. the patient yeah. near us, I think. Again, that's <laughs> probably the best one. You're, yeah, the optometrist will probably have to, they would know it the could details. Be, it could be from a bunch of things because his scotomas may not line up and then we would know where his yeah, scotomas other, are. Yeah. And if he has metaphormopsia, then we can, yeah. you know. Uh, so, reasons. so we were going to give him bad advice over the web. Yeah. <laughs> we'll lead them astray. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that is the last of our questions. Thank you so much. That was a lot of like rapid fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Thank you. <laughs> you held up very well. <laughs> I appreciate that.